So are we talking about American Vega, who's the Wolverine guy, or the Japanese Vega, who I think is Bison? No, that was just I am Dictator. Okay, uh, okay, this is this is a. M. Bison was originally the name of the Mike Tyson clone. <laughs> you know? Obviously, they changed that because Americans aren't dumb enough uh, not to get the pun. And it, I disagree. I don't think it was subtle enough. It, it would have uh, it would have tripped over copyrights, uh, apparently. You can have a Bruce Lee clone, but not a Mike Tyson clone. <laughs> so, yeah. So M. Bison was Balrog. Balrog was uh, the guy that we know as Bison. And uh, which one was Vega? No, no, no. Uh, Vega. No, Vega. Vega. Vega was Vega was, uh, was, was Bison. Uh, yeah. Yes. And yeah. So all three of those guys just swapped their names around. Why did they swap their names around? Because it was easier to mess with the cartridge data that way. And to confuse Interpol. <laughs> well, the Japanese version had, I think, the English letter names anyway. So um, they just sort of swapped the names around rather than actually change them within the game's data. We're going to kill the computer. Oh, no. Stop all the downloading. <laughs> so, I'm a computer. So the reason why the computer takes so much power is because Samuel Hayden just won't delete Quake all of his guy. War. <laughs> Quake guy. <laughs> I get it. They had a Commander Keen guy too, um, which yeah. is cool, I guess. Like I don't know, like how popular that character still is, but that's neat, I suppose. Commander Keen. Who's Commander Keen? Uh, he was a character that id Software also did for some like PC platformers in the. 80s and 90s. Computer platformers? That might like, be actually the first video game I ever played. I mean, not the first video game I ever willingly played, but... <laughs> um, <laughs> it was like a kid with a with a helmet on, and he had, I think, a purple shirt or something. Yeah, that, that might be the one. There was this, like, really old DOS platformer that I played, uh, which should tell you how crap it was by today's standards. Because uh, DOS couldn't do side-scrollers for shit. Um, the... Uh, uh, there was this DOS platformer, and my dad wanted to get me into video games. Why he wanted to get me into video games, I don't know. I'm sure it was a life choice. And he's, he... re and he's, re and he's regretted it ever since. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm sure it's a, a life choice that he's regretted deeply ever since he did it. But the first, his first attempt was this platformer on, on, on PC. I kept falling into the same pit over and over. It was quite funny. Uh, it frustrated him, him, him enough that he actually scared me off playing video games for a while. <laughs> But then he found a way to break me of that by getting a Sonic game on the Genesis that he got us for Christmas one, uh, one, uh, one, one year, and uh, I've I've been a dedicated gamer ever since. So we have Sonic to blame. <laughs> Sonic Spinball specifically, yeah. My my first my, my first game was Sonic Spinball. My first real game, I should say, the first one I played to completion. Yeah, but is and Sonic first... Spinball a real game though? <laughs> Is it? Oh, yeah. ask, ask Donnie. <laughs> you bet your ass it's a real game, goddammit. Turned enough power. <laughs> oh, this hurts. Yeah, hurt me plenty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Too bad that challenge wasn't still going. Yeah, if only. Not a big deal. I have more than enough points to upgrade what I want to actually upgrade. You had like yeah. 14 extra last time you were in that menu. So you probably yeah. just already upgraded everything you like anyway. If I had to yes. guess. One complaint I have with this game's controls is the melee attack. The basic melee attack. Sometimes you just sort of elbow in front of you. Sometimes you rush forward and do the elbow. The problem with that second one is that if you're, like, even slightly off your aim, you just fly past the enemy. That's why. Come I, on. I usually never bother with the melee unless if it's the absolute weakest guys. And then well, I yeah, do it just to save ammo, but... Well, that's the thing. If you hit the weakest guys with a single melee attack, you can trigger a uh, glory kill. So it's actually a really good way to get some health back. Um, but, you know... I miss so often with the melee attack. 
And I don't have that problem in any other first-person game. It's ex it's specifically because of the way it works in this game, where it rushes forward and attempts to... Uh, because I guess they didn't want you to, to feel like you have to rub yourself up against the enemy to do melee attacks, which is admittedly a problem with melee attacks in first-person. But they overcompensated. <laughs> Maybe it's easier with a mouse. Maybe you can be more precise with a mouse. Uh, as far as the melee goes, I know you can with your... Um, with your gun, but that's a different that's a different kettle of fish. Wow, you're so invulnerable from these demons you don't have to fight anymore. <laughs> no, they'll they'll pop up right about now. Systems are now vulnerable. I recommend destroying my cooling system first. This is really goddamn creepy, like having this guy explain how you're supposed to kill him. Like I mean I know My it's a operating robot. systems are now vulnerable. Don't you wish you had this invulnerability power up I just picked up? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Just use your BFG. They have like three nope. extra. <laughs> nope. The, the, the challenge was to use a chainsaw on one of those guys. Oh, okay. Well, now use your BFG because there are like two extra ammo for it here. I know, I know. I should, but I'm not going to. Ah, damn it. Oop. <laughs> yeah, see? Exactly. Now not you use it. the BFG. <laughs> one good thing about the, the challenges in this game is, is that when you die, you still keep your progress towards them. So if yeah. you want to cheese it, you can just keep on dying reload. on purpose and reload for, like, the ones where it's like, okay, it, it will work for uh, rune and weapon mod challenges, too. So if you want to grind for them, you can do it that way without having to, like, start a mission all over. Which is, which I, I do appreciate, because it doesn't make you feel like you lost all of your progress when you died, which is, um, which is good, in my opinion. Ammo. <laughs> yes. What would you call this person? Uh, this is only level two. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh so yeah. So we don't need a we don't need a panic yet. Just slight panic, not full panic. So one of the lore implications for this, uh, well, not implications. It's just written right down. And one of the lore da data logs, they talk about like if there's a tier three demon contamination before running away. First, you need to make sure that you turn all of your, you save your work and turn all of the equipment off. And if you can't find a way out, then you need to uh, give yourself up willingly so the demons won't wreck the place as much. Because you can be just as useful in death as you can be in life. That's literally what the thing says. So yeah, they're yeah. they're evil. This company's evil. <laughs> I mean, they're not entirely wrong either. I mean, granted, because I did look back up the the at the the lore data log since we started, and it they do say that Argent Energy is right now the number one source of energy on the world so turning off the tower actually did probably screw over several million people on planet earth so we didn't really think about that when we we ripped it out oops so it's not like doom guy is a perfect being either but still though it's like yeah these guys are it's not so ambiguous as like you might think if you actually read all the data logs and stuff like that they're pretty awful but all in the name of progress. Okay, man, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is it, probably intentionally the funniest line in the game. Oh, I mean, red's a bright color, so having blood all over the place, I suppose. But no, actually, no, you're right. It, it does kind of become a dark. What even is that that you're trying to see? I was trying to see if I could pick it up. Yeah, but I didn't even know what kind of pickup that was. Some kind of ammo. Okay. Nothing too important. Punch. Ow, my spleen. <laughs> Ow, you're everything. Yeah, that guy probably didn't even have a spleen anymore. Yeah, you guys appendicitis out earlier. What does the UAC need with all these chainsaws? Why is the chainsaw embedded in the metal? Who was trying to cut metal with a chainsaw? Uh, now, where can I get that chainsaw? It would have been really helpful in Resident Evil 7. Oh, uh, well, it's stuck in the metal, so you, if you can pull it out, it's all yours. And thus, you became the king of England, <laughs> pulling the chainsaw <laughs> from the metal. Redneck King uh, Arthur is my favorite uh, version of King 
<laughs> so what? But since Merlin's a magician and Redneck King Arthur, would he just be the one with an actual cabin? <laughs> The castle would actually be a townhome. <laughs> I think Merlin's hut should be like a, a trailer, probably. <laughs> to be honest, though, like the one thing that America is missing as far as scenery goes that other countries have in relative abundance is castles. We need a castle. One that's not Disneyland castle, you know? Oh. <laughs> Someone build a suggestion. castle, damn it. <laughs> There's... Uh... I wonder how long a castle took to build in medieval times. Because, like, I know that, like, pyramids were, like, a several hundred years thing. So I'm wondering how long castles actually took to build and stuff like that. Because by the time the America was colonized, like, they were a little obsolete, is the thing. Build a memorial of me one million cubits high! <laughs> no. No. What's a cubit? Um, I got nothing. <laughs> okay, I believe I have everything. Arrows at you to make you fall in love with something? That's cupid, you dilt. 3D mm. maps. They're great. They're awesome. I wish every game had a 3D map. Even a 2D game? Oh, it, look... I don't think there are that many 2D games that don't have verticality, but... <laughs> uh, the the Oops, map in this, this game is here. pretty good. My only nitpick on the Switch version, at least, is that it scrolls kind of slowly. But there might be an option to speed that up that I'm just missing, or whatever. Because it's actually scrolling a lot faster from what I've just seen of that little bit that Ryan's doing right now. Yeah, it scrolls fine here, so... It's uh, probably... It may, just, it may just be a weird Switch thing. Yeah. Wait, Yeah, but on. is it as hot as me, UAC spokesperson? Wait, wait, hang on. The computer has circuitry that's 170-something times hotter than the surface of the sun. Okay, that's not what a... Com he is the enemy of all computers, goddammit. <laughs> I think it should not be uh, the case. That is like overclocking to the logical extreme. All to run crisis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's still only. And even it still, still not, blows it's, up. It's, yeah, it's still not at optimal settings. <laughs> uh, the frame rate chugs if you even just try to fight a couple enemies. It's a shame too, because nobody cares how good of a game crisis is. They just want to know if you can run it. That's almost kind of the joke at this point. Infinite ammo! You know, because I have EA Origins access thing, I actually have Crisis and Crisis 2. Can you run it? I haven't tried. Do it. Because, <laughs> like, I can barely run games that run fine on people's normal computers, so I doubt I can run Crisis. We, uh, we should do a BSE playthrough of Crisis on the lowest graphic settings possible. And it still needs to be a 4K video. <laughs> uh. Yeah, this is a bit of a weird uh, map room. Because you can just go and destroy all four coolant systems at the same time, and it really doesn't add any more enemies to the mix. Hmm. Which is a weird thing. So it's, I think it's actually more beneficial to just run to each one than actually fight the enemies first. Well, that's one thing the, about the... The enemies are probably just made to be, to be a nuisance. Yeah. Well, that's one thing about the game is, is that it becomes a lot less... Not really linear, but... There's less situations where you walk into a room, the door is closed, and you have to kill all the enemies to get out as the game progresses. Like, there still are a couple of those, but it's much less common. Uh, yeah. The game incentivizes you killing things through... A, the fun of actually fighting, and B, the stuff that you get for killing them. The experience points and all that, yeah. Yeah, the experience points, the heals, the ammo. Oh, hello, green guy. I oh, my grenade did that. <laughs> I usually just try to kill everything ever anyway, because this game does not have what? any infinite what? spawning rooms. Which that guy just popped out of existence. <laughs> yeah, now okay. he popped out of existence, too. Because <laughs> you shot him. Zort. Oh, how lucky. <laughs> uh, yep. Well, like I knew it was there, so. 
You're so. I always feel so stingy with that with the BFG ammo the BFG because ammo. I mean, obviously, if e e each, each room has at least like one of them. Yeah, so you. So you really should be using it. You're you're obviously intended to use it more than maybe you, you might think you need to. It's it, it's the mega elixir problem. Yeah, I mean, is as long as you have, like, a conservation, um, and a conservation element in your video game, you're always going to have people who will just not use stuff because you might need it later. It's never even not when you know it's the final boss. Yeah, it's never not going to happen. Because what that if there's a super boss, Ryan? Come on. That and there yeah. is the there is the inherent like pride element. Like there's this there's this resource that's really limited. Let's see how far I can get without using it. You know? Yeah. Uh, I get that. I I get that. I get that sense of accomplishment a lot from like survival horror games and whatnot games that are really heavy on, on on resource conservation i try to use as little of it as possible and as a result when i get to the, the lab at the end of the mansion i have like 10 million grenade launcher ammo and uh, and everything becomes a joke after that <laughs> don't some of the and resident, then the fun begins don't some of the resident evil games like count how many times you heal and stuff like that too on the yes, pause they screen do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they they count how many times you do, and I think in like classic Resident Evil, your 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 ranking is specifically hurt by using the first aid spray item. Like you can use as many herbs as you want, but the first aid spray is considered cheating, so it lowers your rank. Um, in which is kind of mean, but in classic Resident Evil, do you still need to mix like three herbs to get them to do a full heal? Or three green herbs, or one green herb and a red herb? Okay. I mean, wow, you sir! Have... You just punched me in the dick. Thank you. I mean, you don't have as Thank much. You, May I have another, <laughs> sir? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have as much health in classic Resident Evil, though. So two green herbs really will patch you up quite a lot. So okay. Mostly, you're going to be mixing herbs to save on inventory space more so than trying to heal yourself better. Okay, that makes sense. Because the only ones I've still played to the, at this point is 4 and a little bit of Resident Evil Revelations. But I don't understand how anybody can play those games with a standard controller. So I gave up pretty early. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I think uh, the remake HD version is actually on PS3. So you can probably get your hands on that easily enough. Yeah, well, I, I think that the tank controls probably wouldn't bother me so much. Well, I mean, they might. I don't know. I've never played it, but I feel like the straight-up tank controls would probably actually might feel a little bit less awkward than the weird crap that they do with the over-the-shoulder stuff in Revelations. Trains! Well, I mean, it's the same control scheme that you're already used to from 4, so... Yeah, but I played but... 4 on the, the Wii so where I could aim. <laughs> yeah. You do have, um... You do have the option to turn off the tank control on the remake remake, though. Cool. So, you know, whatever works. I recommend the tank controls first, because the game is balanced for them, but... Is there ever any point in this game where you can, like, knock a demon off a cliff and they die? Yeah. Uh, oh, wait, what? <laughs> you fell between the boxes. <laughs> I thought you fell into a bottomless pit. <laughs> Yeah, I thought so too for a second. Is the thing okay? So that get back here. So that's actually probably my biggest issue with this game is that the platforming sucks. And well, and welcome to every first-person game ever. Yeah, but this game has a lot of it. Is the is the thing? And if you, it I have an easy enough time with it. Honestly, I kind of find the environment traversal kind of fun. Not my as fun as uh, like it could be, but it's it it works. My the big issue and the environments make me think about where I'm going and why. My big issue is is that like you jump and you try to grab onto a ledge and then sometimes you just won't grab onto the ledge for some reason and almost I've every never time had that issue. I have that issue all the time and almost every time you miss a jump it's an instant death and so you have to sit through the long ass loading screen of the of which is worse on the Switch version. I should, this isn't as big of an issue, I'd say, on, like, PC or whatever, where the load times for the levels are, like, seven seconds. But on Switch, it's, like, a full minute to reload the level so <laughs> after he, every death. You say he, he won't grab onto the ledge. That's something that I haven't had a problem with. Is yeah, that same a Switch here. thing? I, it, it might, might, it, it might be. Right? I, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, but I 
you know, it might just me be being bad. I don't know. But there were a lot of times where, like, you know, some ledges you just straight up cannot grab because the game won't isn't programmed to let you grab them. And usually those are a little bit more obvious. Like, okay, that's going to lead to out of bounds. They won't let you grab on that. That's usually not what I'm talking about. It's more, there's a lot of points where you try to grab onto a ledge that's green, and then sometimes it takes, like, two or three jumps to get onto it or something like that. It might be a switch issue. I don't know. If anybody knows anything behind the tech to this game, that would be an interesting... Jesus, there's a lot of demons in this room. Yeah, this is one of the most annoying rooms in the game. Mostly due to just how much shit they throw at you. Use of the BFG is heavily recommended. I think they might have designed this room specifically to encourage you to start using the BFG. <laughs> you missed. Oops. Oh, I missed. <laughs> uh, Asterix, using the BFG well is highly recommended. <laughs> yes. You shouldn't have aimed so low in the first place, damn it. You don't need to you don't need to hit them. You just need to shoot vaguely in their their direction. Well, I'll, sir, I'll live either way. In that sense, the BFG is probably the closest thing in this game to classic classic Doom gameplay. Did the BFG basically work the same way in the old Doom games? It was the screen nuke. Okay. Yeah. I uh, well, I was I was making a backhanded comment of the way, about the way aiming worked in classic Doom, but I Oh yeah, because uh, everything aimed. You, in you all couldn't directions. aim up and down. Yeah. <laughs> everything aimed in all vertical directions. Yeah. Which doesn't make much sense these days, but yeah. I'm pretty sure I pointed my gun at the wall, but that demon 50 feet up sure got hit pretty hard. So, you know, I'm not <laughs> complaining. Well, you know, at least you'd hit things. Can't say the same for certain other games that I've played. Ugh, probably the worst defender. Uh. Yeah, you know, a lot of the old, a lot of the old 3D uh, first-person RPGs had an element of random chance to their accuracy, even though you were, you were poking. You mean with like, like XCOM? Person, what? <laughs> like XCOM? Uh, XCOM. Uh, I've never it, played XCOM. I it's imagine. one of those. It's one of those percentage of hits you could, but the graphic has like the barrel of the gun like right in front of the enemy's face. You have a 99% chance of hitting. You still miss. <laughs> it's like the modern yeah. day version of the Final Fantasy thing where the character walks up and swipes the monster with a sword, and you visibly see the sword hit them, and still says yes. Miss. It's like yeah, D Daggerfall and Morrowind both have that aspect, where you could be swinging your your sword in their face, and you'll hear a miss sound more often than not. It's especially bad early on in the game. Ugh. How stupid. I got killed by the first goddamn bandit because of that. Because my sword kept missing. Ugh. How much of the game did you have to redo? Well, I mean, it was just the first... Well, the, you can also save anywhere in Elder oh. Scrolls, so oh, it doesn't okay. really... Like, when you die, you just, re you just reload your save file two seconds before that and throw yourself at the wall again until it breaks. <laughs> Elevator's coming up. Ooh, funky techno beats. Don't, don't wanna. Secret. <laughs> That's what about it, 80s the soundtrack just got? <laughs> Arnold's chasing us. No, no, no. That has a distinctive... It's like, let your cat at your Casio. <laughs> so, maybe more John Carpenter? <laughs> a little slower. <laughs> Freaking elevators, man. Yep, and that's the last Praetor token. I am now fully updated. Oh, uh, no, you can you can put in... Uh, you have 39 freaking weapon upgrade points, man. Use them. <laughs> Gotta get the stuff off first. For God's sakes. <laughs> it bothers me. It bothers me that you're not using your weapon, weapon upgrade. It's like, once you have over 30, it's like, okay, might as well at least use some of them. I'm saving them for next game. <laughs> what? <laughs> Man, Doom game knows there's a next game. and video games suck. I'm so tired of seeing them. Of course, that might be because they always just make me think of Devil May Cry 2 whenever I see them. And we'll get to that game soon. Don't worry. You've been and saying that for five years. <laughs> Well, they just released the new HD collection on PS4, so I have no excuse anymore. 
Ooh, it's a big brain. Um, <laughs> that's not pressing. <laughs> Everything's gonna go to shit. <laughs> Man, how much porn does this guy have if he needs a computer this big to store all of it? <laughs> it's all 4K, man. Oh, uh, okay. 4K and 3D. So 3D. it has like maybe it may have like maybe one movie on there. <laughs> it was very expensive porn, Ted. <laughs> super su super exp super expensive super computer backs up on a middle on a mini flash drive. <laughs> Back Man, to hell know, we go. Now that you say that, it sounds like fucking Sword Art Online. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding. That's basically what happens to Yui. This is like super advanced AI designed for uh, 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 monitoring the psyches of the players. And he backs it up on his freaking nerve gear. Okay, sure. So if they can fit that computer on the freaking USB drive, that does pr that does prove that that computer is basically just 98% porn and 1% anime. <laughs>